Welcome back to yet other Gardening with Ryan. You know who I am, or maybe you don't. If not, welcome. This show is probably not for you. I say that because the, the amount of people who enjoy this type of content are pretty low, but you should stick around. So, in this one, we are going to be talking specifically about Lutheran Christology and some questions I have about it. Um, I just learned that um, apparently Kamnitz's two-volume work on the natures of Christ is used as standard in Eastern Orthodox cemeteries. Now, th this is interesting to me because... Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not a scholar of Lutheran... There, we have a head for the hose now. I'm not a scholar of Lutheran categories by... Oh, look. We have flowers on that now. And that's still dry, but that's expected. I'm not, by any stretch of the imagination, a scholar on Lutheran categories, but as far as I understand Lutheran Christology... And I know it's not by necessity tied to the supper, but uh, most of Lutheran Christology and its controversies have had to do with the Lord's Supper. And um, Lutherans, feel free to just ravage me in the comments here. But here's how I've had it explained. Or here's my probably a misrepresentation of what was explained to me correctly, and I'm sure some lo friendly Lutheran might come along and correct me, but um, as far as I understand it, the presence of Christ in the Eucharist is not to be understood in a sense of corporeal presence, or the substance of one thing going from what it was not to what it was. And the way I've had this explained to me is that the human nature of Christ by the hypostatic union if the Son wills to communicate an attribute which can normally only belong to a divine nature. To the Son, he may do so. And, or, or, or to his human nature, so that his human nature can exercise as the human nature Things that only God can do in his divinity. So, they would say, I believe, and this is one that I kind of want to take root, but I kind of don't want to force it, so I'll just kind of just get a little dirt and go right on top of there. The way they would explain it is that Christ is now present everywhere in his humanity in the same way that divinity is omnipresent. So, his human nature is now present the method, you could say, or fashion in which the divine nature is omnipresent, because this has been communicated to him. Now, here's where I start to get confused. Excuse me for just a moment. They then say, um, I'm a bit off here, that the presence in the supper is not to be understood as a corporeal or local one, or as to say you can point to a definitive point in time and space 
where the body of Christ has become present. And please forgive me if this is a misrepresentation, but I believe they go on to say that Christ is present. His humanity is present insofar as it is present the way his divinity is present. Now, that is where I'm, where I don't necessarily say I disagree yet because I'm not educated enough on these categories to really say, but that's where I start to squirm a little bit. And I, I, I now let me clarify something. Against this, the Zwingli, or, uh, the Zwingli, I was going to say that, that reformed, but like Zwingli in particular, said, well, a human body by nature, a human is in one place at one time, so since Christ is at the right hand of the Father, and then Lutherans responded, the Father is not incarnate or corporeal. What does that mean? He's at the right hand of the Father. So, here are my questions. Question number one. I've had it explained to me that Christ's body and blood in the supper, it's not that his body and blood is in a metaphysical way present there, in a way it wasn't before, but rather that it's revealed to be for you. But since the divine mode of presence and the divine nature's presence is completely incorporeal, and does not touch the corporeal, cannot suffer, for example. Christ became incarnate and suffered in human flesh and shed human blood for my sin. Right? Would you guys then say that you are literally drinking the human blood of Christ? Because to me... To affirm where I see a lot of comfort in the sacrament, I think some sort of physical presence needs to be maintained because what does it really mean, this is my body, this is my blood, if it actually just means like this is how I reveal myself when I'm present in all things. like. It, the other alternative explanations, and here's what I'll say is the, uh, what I think is the Roman view, but <laughs> forgive me if I'm wrong here too. Uh, or alternate explanations, some of them would be like, well, Christ is not omnipresent according to his human nature. However, that does not preclude the divine nature doing miracles. Um, the Roman view would say that uh, the, div the human nature does not receive the divine attributes proper, but because of the hypostatic union, um, I mean, most people are willing to grant miracles happening to people, just not Jesus. Like, later Reformed commentaries about Jesus appearing to the disciples, they say, like, he, like, removed bricks and put them back, or, like, crawled through a window and stuff, and, like, I mean, it gets, it gets silly. And I think that's one, I think that's, I think that's ridiculous. But, um, to say that the natures are not confused or altered or mixed in any way, I, I, I'm not saying I necessarily object because I don't think I have a full enough understanding of it yet, but the Eastern Orthodox are comfortable enough with Chemnitz to use him as a book, and I know they're very big on presence, but um, they're the real presence, but to me the The, diff the main difference between, like, spiritual presence and real presence has been, well, exactly that, right? Like, it's like, hey, this is the physical body and blood, the same stuff that was crucified to the cross, and the same blood that was shed for you, this is it. 
take and eat, take and drink. Um, so some questions I have. One of Luther's main contentions was a failure of us to take the words literally. And I'm wondering if the same could be applied the other way to some extent. I don't know. Because is means is, and it seems like maybe an... Okay, I'm failing to see how, like, a non-corporeal, but it's still the human nature present, but it's not in a physical way, versus, like, the reformed view, except modify it where um, it's universal grace instead of just peculiar. I'm having a hard time understanding how this is fundamentally different from the reformed view, except they would say what the reformed attribute, the non-temporal presence of the Holy Spirit, they would, seems like the Lutherans are saying that it's not the non-temporal presence of the human nature of Christ. And that seems so abstract and with other theologies and ancient theologies and okay uh, yeah, you know a lot, a lot of people will probably be like oh why are you ripping on Lutheranism so hard uh, well, well maybe because I've ripped on every other tradition on this show so much that I have to like give everyone their turn but please help me understand how this is not a spiritual supper it's according to the divine mode of presence because last I checked the divine mode of presence is completely incorporeal has no relation to three dimensional reality you can't say there or there or there so do you actually eat and drink the thing or just something that connects you to the thing. Do you actually eat and drink the body and blood? I feel like that's I feel like that's a question that doesn't even necessarily need much more explanation. In the most plain sense of the word, I don't care what your theory is, whether it's transubstantiation, consubstantiation, whatever, dude. It, it, it. It's all substantiations to me. I just want to know what it is. But my, my, my fear and the worst way I can paint it is that they basically just have a doctrine that everything is... like the, I, I'm not saying this is their belief. This is just like if I were to assume worst case scenario. There's a doctrine that everything is the body of Christ, but when you celebrate something as the Lord's Supper is the body of Christ, it's revealed in a saving way to you or something, and I'm like, is, okay, does it actually, I mean, I feel like it's a simple thing, in a sense, well, I feel like If you're going to be insistent on a literal reading of the words, I think I need to just come to understand Lutheran Christology more. Because the Roman position, and this is where I would find myself almost inclined on this issue, is that Christ in his human nature is multi-present. In that he is present in all the altars across the world. And... Oh, speaking of the right hand thing, and Lutherans bring up the point, well, the right hand of the Father is not, like, an address. Yes, but Jesus still has his human body, and it's somewhere, right? Do Lutherans make any statements further than that? Because I think we all agree on that. If you guys said that it just, like, turned into, like, a spiritual, no longer present in one place thing then I would start to get worried. But I have no problem 
with Christ being present in more than one place because, well, God can do what God wants, but saying uh, at the human nature becomes omnipresent. See, I think both are, I, I think both the Lutheran and Reformed approaches to the like, supper controversy are hitting it wrong. Because I don't think, because one is saying, okay, we basically can't have him, like, do everything special. Like, even though Peter got to walk on water, like, we can't have Jesus doing that by his own power. Like, we have to, like, that's, um, on the Calvinist said, that, that it seems like an extreme. But I don't think you have to, now, I don't know if it actually is historic. Maybe there were other people who taught this. But I think it might be a bit of an overreaction to go and say that the omnis are communicated to the human nature. And I don't think they need to be because of the hypostatic union, because of the inseparability. There's no need to communicate a divine attribute to another nature because if it's exercised as the person, even from the divine nature, it is the human person that is acting because there is only one person. So when the person of the Son acts, it is always the God-man. I wonder if Lutherans would say like the Roman position is like semi-Nestorian. That'd be kind of funny. Because I would say, and I would agree with Rome here, multi-present but not omnipresent how does that work i have not really much of a clue and i'm not too concerned about it but i feel like applying the same consistent like exegetical method that i use to prove my other theological points if i take the verses about the eucharist literally it, it it feels pretty hard to stretch a uh, semi-symbolic, or not symbolic, not symbolic at all. I'm, I don't mean to mischaracterize your view. A view where the true reality is not a physical one. And I want to ask, and maybe this is how it is. I would say that you actually eat and drink the reality not just a way to get to the reality, but that you actually eat and drink the body and blood of Christ. You eat and drink your sacrifice. So if people ask me if I'm a cannibal, I usually just say yes. Because I fail to see how I'm not. I mean... I also feel to see how that's fundamentally different from what Jesus said, where he's like, you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood. You know the implications of how people would receive that? And I know it seems strange, concerns that the uh, Lutheran doctrine is upholding the real presence. That's usually the other way around. But these are just my thoughts. And I was gardening, so obviously I should make a video. But, you know... And we, I moved this jade from a big pot here, and it really got pretty dry. And since it's, well, it was much heavier than me, I let it dry out a little before moving it. But that made it kind of, oh, there's a little lizard on there. See that? I'll try to. Do a mist kind of thing, so I don't put the lizard. Hold on, let me zoom in on that little guy. Look at that boy. Now, this might seem kind of rude, however. That looks like a really vulnerable spot to get wrecked by a predator. So. Oh wait, homie's just chilling. Homie likes the shower.
You want to shower after a hot day? Okay, homie. Yeah. See, he's just... Oh, wait a minute. See, he's just... Showering. Chilling. It's like, ooh, yeah. This is nice. He's just like, he's, he's soaking it up, literally. Can't get enough of it. It's like he's moving his body to get hit by the nozzle. That's cute. still on there, right there. Right in the center of the screen. See? Nice plant back there. So anyway. Oh, yeah, the homie's still just chilling. Full disclosure. I'm sure I mess I'm sure I misrepresented Lutheran and other viewpoints in all sorts of ways. <laughs> but these are questions that Maybe people are asking, maybe they're not, but people have written many doctoral theses and stuff about the reform and Lutheran differences on Christology, so surely my questions have been addressed in some fashion. Oh, there's the lizard still, right on there. Right in the center of the screen. Yep. Well, it seems like it's just about bedtime for the lizard. Sun's going down. And we're trying to bring back this plant. Just like that for a good 30 seconds. Well, thanks for watching.